You are listening to the Think Brick Australia podcast. Think Brick Australia represents the clay, brick and paver manufacturers of Australia. Brick by Brick, our podcast will discuss technical information and architectural case studies with special guests. I'm your host, Elizabeth McIntyre, the CEO of Think Brick Australia. Today, I'm delighted to have with me Michael Congress to discuss textured walls, otherwise known as corbling. But Michael, before we take a deep dive into the texture of bricks, could you outline another use for bricks other than its intended purpose, which is a brick wall? Elizabeth, glad to be here again. Actually, I was doing some some paving work over the break and I wanted to make sure the pavers were the same distance from the fence and the house. So I used a, a brick as a bit of a ruler and made sure that they were equally spaced. You just never stop thinking brick, do you, Michael? No, nah, always thinking brick. So, Michael, we're going to talk today about textured walls and what we've seen throughout the Think Brick Awards is that these have become more and more popular. And I remember Fu Ling Ku talked about all architects love looking at inspirations for what other architects do and certainly we will discuss the hello house a little bit later but she was saying that she originally got the inspiration for the hello house from looking at some other corbling as we like to call it or we could say jutting out bricks and and you also call it textured walls so is there could you describe exactly what we're talking about here when we use those terms So, Elizabeth, when we talk about textured walls or or corbelled walls, we're actually talking about brick walls, but instead of the unit being flush or in the plane of the wall, we're actually using the brick in a way which means it's either protruding out of the wall towards us or as an extension to the wall. And by doing that, it gives a wall a bit more individual character and we can really lay these bricks in different patterns and in different configurations to give our wall a, a really custom, unique feel. And I think just to clarify that, because a lot of architects talk about the texture of bricks and really what we're talking here is what can be created by the brick itself, not necessarily by that individual texture. So it's this sort of embellishment of the wall rather than the actual brick. Yeah, that's right. So it's not so much about the brick or the face of the brick and and how that looks and feels, but how that unit is laid in a wall configuration. And so the brick layer or the the contractor doing the work is laying them in a way which might be a little bit off centre, but it, it really can create these unique looks and feels. So when we look at the design considerations, and again, this is another one where we get a lot of inquiries about, and if we look at the design requirements as per AS3700, Michael, are there any compliance issues that we need to think about with this? Yeah, there are. So what we do is, first of all, we actually break up a textured or a corbelled brick wall into two different categories. The first category is in-plane corbelling, and we typically see that at the end of a wall where we've got this staggered end, this sort of stepping effect, which really gives us a, a, an extension to the wall. A little bit like a, a cornice almost. Very much some. like a cornice. And yeah. we see them in, in old churches and really historic buildings and they look really good and they add a really nice effect to the finish of the wall. And that's in plan corbelling. And the beauty of in plan corbelling is that there aren't a lot of additional design requirements that we have to consider. The main consideration for these types of corbelled walls is the additional moment that the corbel will induce onto the wall and we just have to make sure that the wall can withstand those additional loads because you don't have bricks underneath to support it like a normal wall so you need to make sure that the wall can support it. And so it's not like it's almost like it can't be a cantilever effect. Like you can't basically have a single strip of brick extending from a wall. Do you know, is that what you're sort of saying for an endless length of, of meterage? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I mean, you can definitely step the wall incrementally, but yeah. you cannot go long distances without supporting it in some way. It makes sense. So we've gone in plane. And what does now out of plane refer to? So out of plane corbelling is when that brick is stepping towards us. So if we're looking at the wall, we've got the bricks coming towards us and that's in the out of plane direction. So just to go back, in plane is in the direction of the wall. If you think of it sort of a left and right, 
but out of plane is forwards and backwards and and really those bricks are coming out towards us and I could use a term here called bumpy it's bumpy <laughs> look, pimply yeah pimply <laughs> there's a lot of words in um, and out yeah in and out <laughs> and and when we do that with a brick we are inducing different loads onto the wall so we do have to take into account a few more design factors when ensuring that our out of plane corbelled wall meets the requirements of AS 3700. And so what are the sort of key, I think there's maybe three or four things that we need to think about with this out of plane design. So first of all, these are all from the standard AS 3700 masonry structures. And the first point which is important is that if we're doing corbelled walls in accordance with the standard, we should be using solid units. And I know we've talked about it before that the the two typical types of brick units that you find are cord units with the holes in them or solid units. If we're doing out of plane corbelling, we really want to utilise solid units. The second consideration is because that brick now is stepping towards us, there's that little bit of overhang. Now, when we lay these bricks and we corbel them in the out of plane direction towards us and we step those bricks towards us, we're now inducing extra loads onto the wall that wouldn't normally be there if those units were laid flush on top of each other. And so we need to make sure that the wall can withstand those loads. And so what the standard does is it puts limits on individual units and how much the entire wall can protrude. So I think that's sort of like similar to when you're on a diving board, you know, and you're bending over and if you, you can balance there for a little bit, but then if you go that little bit further, that's obviously when you're about to dive in. And I guess you know, a simple approach would be that we don't want the bricks to protrude any further than they're meant to, obviously to stop from the wall falling over. Elizabeth, that's exactly right. And so AS3700 puts a limit on the amount the total wall can protrude towards us of half the thickness of a brick. And so if we look at a typical brick dimension, which is 230 long, by 76 high, by 110 millimetres deep, it means the total protrusion of the entire wall cannot be greater than 55 millimetres. And I think we've seen some great examples from Koichi Takata's Arc, as well as Bright Studio, that you could even, as long as you're not going any more than that 55 millimetres, you can actually vary the overhang to, to create another beautiful effect. Even with the, the half brick limitation that's imposed on us by 3700 it still gives us a lot of design flexibility to create these walls and these buildings which do have a a, a unique point of difference the other specific restriction that as 3700 imposes on on out of plane corbelled walls is that no single brick can protrude more than a third of the depth of the unit so again if you look at our standard brick with a 110 millimeter thickness no single brick can protrude more than 36 millimetres. And that's to ensure that we don't have in individual bricks sort of overturning and, and, and falling over, that we're stepping them out a little bit, but not so much that we're going beyond the plane of, of failure. The third restriction on individual units is also half the height of the unit. So for a, a normal unit, 76 millimetres high gives us a height of 38 millimetres. So it's close to our 36 mark. And again, it's just making sure that depending on the type of unit that we're using, that we're not stepping these bricks so far out that they're causing failure. And this sounds actually complicated, but it is also common sense to a certain degree. It's sounding harder than it actually is. Look, everything that we're trying to do in the standard is to ensure that when you're designing these corbelled walls in an out of plane direction, that we're doing it in a way which allows us and allows the wall to remain stable throughout its design life. Makes sense. What are some other considerations to think about? In a wall which is corbelled out of plane, you've got protrusions and so with that comes safety and, and scalability issues. So if these walls are going to be in public domains, if they're going to be external or potentially near children, ensure that there's fencing or protection around those walls so that they can't be easily climbed. And I think, Michael, the other um, consideration which I'm going to ask you to elaborate on is not only does the wall create this beautiful embellishment and in the protrusion, but that also then leads to the consequences of the effects throughout the day and the shadow effects. And that's whereby utilising out-of-plane corbelling can really cast these beautiful shadows and through stepping of bricks and moving your corbel backwards and forwards, 
the way the building looks in the morning is really quite different to the way the building looks in the afternoon. And it's a way we can really utilise the sun's light to create different walls throughout the day. And look, we've gone through the design consideration, Michael, but just when we get to the actual practical construction considerations, what do we need to think about there? When we're building a corbelled wall, the wall essentially is moving. It's moving forwards, it's moving backwards. And so if we're tying that wall back into a a structural frame for the external facade of a building, making sure that we've allowed for that cavity where it widens and shortens. And so the wall ties that we select and and the strength of those ties must be of adequate strength to allow for a wider cavity. And that also plays into account with a double brick wall. So if we've got two brick leaves and they're going up simultaneously and we've got a cobbled wall, we've got that wall moving, like we said, and so the cavity is going to move with it. And we know that we need to maintain a cavity in our wall for moisture prevention. So if we've got a cobbled wall, making sure that cobble doesn't breach the cavity and have that constant cavity width maintained throughout the entire height of the wall. That makes sense. And then if we looked at bond type and strength, what what would we think about here? So Hello House is a really good example of this. The bricks haven't been used in a constant stretcher pattern. We've got bricks, we've rotated them 90 degrees and have them protrude out of the wall to give us the effect. And so making sure our coursings and our brick patterns and our bonds line up, if they need to tie into doors or windows or or anything else, because we don't have that continual stretcher pattern and we're using bricks in a non-conventional way, making sure that everything lines up. There's one other point I just wanted to talk about, Michael, and for those of our listeners that are familiar with brick and love brick, they'd be familiar with the Chowchak Wing Building for um, the University of Technology, Sydney. Now, the interesting part about this is that to the naked eye, there looks like there's a lot of protruding bricks and that they've been corbelled. But could you just clarify exactly how that effect was achieved? That effect was achieved by creating custom brick units, which were tied into a custom steel frame. And so that was a bespoke project. A lot of design consideration went into understanding how that would work and and the way it would be laid and constructability. But it's important to note that as a cobbling effect, it's quite unique and very custom, which was needed to achieve that outcome. And again, sort of it is on a completely separate level to the design considerations that we've just gone through. Yeah, that's right. I guess everything that we've talked about is being able to utilise a traditional brick yes. in a cobbled fashion. So look, Michael, let me see if I've got all of these things correctly when we're talking about our textured or our cobbled brick walls. Firstly, we just need to think of some design considerations. There's no major changes in the design requirements from Australian Standards 3700. The first thing is we're going to look at two things, in-plane corbelling, which is again, as we talked about, it's found at the ends of walls. And these are sort of, it, it's continuing along the plane. Sometimes it has a cascade effect going down. And I think what we're saying there is that we just don't want to make sure that that turns into a cantilever or a dangerous extension of in-plane corbelling. When we then look at out of plane, which is where we see the bricks protruding out, there's a number of considerations here. The first is that we really need to use solid units, not cord bricks. I guess you could use those, but they would have a completely different effect on that as well. We also need to look at the total projection of the wall. And I did use the analogy of standing on a diving platform. We don't want the bricks to be protruding so much that they cause the wall, in fact, to fall over. So there's a really couple of simple things that we do there. The first, that it should not exceed one half of the wall's thickness. And the second thing is that the projection of any single brick shouldn't exceed a third of the unit or one half of the height of the unit. So we would take the lesser two and then get a maximum single corbel of 36 millimetres. We always like to talk about safety on the show and we obviously want to make sure that whatever this design is, for example, that we think about the safety elements, the scalability, young children around and how this might work in if it's a public project in everyday use or how people um, could decide to use that for perhaps a use that it wasn't intended for initially. The last thing we want to think about is the beautiful shadowing effects and that might take a little time to look at the projection of where the sun's light is going to fall on the building and and that sort of additional gift that keeps on giving with corbelling where it just creates some beautiful shadows throughout the day. 
from a construction perspective, we want to make sure that if we're tying it back to a structural frame, we want to make sure that we've got maybe longer wall ties than we would have in the past because the corbel does step away. We want to make sure in double brick walls that the corbel doesn't breach the cavity. And again, we talked a little bit about the bond type and length. You you don't necessarily have a standard stretcher pattern for these out of plane corbel walls. And the best example for that would be the Hello House to create that effect. Michael, I hope I've covered all of that very quickly. Yes, Elizabeth. And for out of plane walls, the main consideration that we need to comply with AS3700 is all about the dimensions of the wall. And Michael, it sounds a lot harder than it is. And as you know, I'm normally doing something else whilst I'm listening to my podcasts. So where can people go if they want to find out a little bit more about textured brick walls? Our website should be your first point of call. And we've actually got a fact sheet on textured brick walls. And a lot of the points that we talked about today are covered in that fact sheet. And and we talk about those uh, different dimensions and, and how to proportion the wall to comply with AS3700. Michael, it's been a pleasure to talk texture with you today. Thank you for being here. Thank you. If you have enjoyed this podcast, please follow, rate and review our podcast. We are always looking for new ways to think brick. If you have an idea of what you'd like to hear about, there's a link in our show notes to let us know.